Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. The Law and Justice Party has presented a new election broadcast. It deals with the migration in the context of continuing crisis on the Italian island of Lampedusa. The island, with a population of 6,000, received some 13,000 migrants last week alone, with more still arriving. Lampedusa's vice mayor points out that in the past 10 days, up to 13,000 refugees have come to the small Italian island. We are not in a position to accept 200,000 migrants on an island that is less than 20 square kilometers. During a one-day visit to Lampedusa, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen presented a 10-point plan to combat the migrant crisis on the Italian island. 1. Increase support for Italy from the European Union Agency for Asylum and Frontex. 2. Assist in the transfer of migrants from Lampedusa to other member states. 3. Organizing returns to home countries. 4. Combating human smuggling. 5. Strengthening border surveillance. 6. Limiting the use of unseaworthy vessels. 7. Applying fast border procedures. 8. Increasing awareness campaigns. 9. Stronger cooperation with the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. 10. Implement the European Union's agreement with Tunisia to curb migration. Proposals to forcibly locate migrants to member countries were criticized by the law and justice government. You won't believe it. The German president has communicated that thousands of migrants from Italy are to be relocated to other countries. I call on member countries for voluntary solidarity and the relocation of migrants from Italy. Voluntary solidarity and the voluntariness was to accept migrants or to pay penalties. So voluntariness, as issued by the European Union, probably never heralds anything good. At a press conference today, the sovereign Poland MEP indicated which opposition MEPs voted for the migrant pact. You can see the opposition politicians themselves. You can say anything but actions, not words. As Italy and other European Union countries grapple with the migrant crisis, the opposition accuses the government over visa irregularities. The Prime Minister must as soon as possible give to the Internal Security Agency and to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the same full information. What happened? What is the scale of abuse? How many visas were sold? To whom were they sold? Foreign Ministry authorities said that the matter is being investigated. All irregularities should be explained and the suspect should be punished. The opposition has grasped at the issue like a drowning man grasps at a razor. The opposition demanded the resignation of Foreign Minister Zbigniew Rao. He should be here in Poland today as a dismissed minister and stand before the Polish prosecutor and answer these questions. Today marks eight years since the spokesman for the government of Prime Minister Ewa Kopacz, Mr. Tomczyk, said that Poland is ready to accept any number of migrants. It was exactly on the 18th of September 2015. Today the debate that is taking place is not based on facts, but is unfortunately based on certain insinuations or lies on the part of the opposition, which must be straightened out. We can already identify the migration policy of the European Union as one of the main topics of the election campaign in Poland. Here there is such a war between law and justice and the civic platform on the subject of migration and these parties are blaming each other for what is not actually here because there is no such thing as a migration wave in our country. In just 27 days Poland will hold parliamentary elections and on the same day Poles will answer the question on, of the relocation of illegal migrants in a referendum. Polish President Andrzej Duda is in the United States. He is currently attending the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals Summit and tomorrow Duda will meet Turkish President Recep Erdogan and United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. He will also attend the opening of the Sustainable Development Goals Summit and a reception held to mark the 50th anniversary of Germany's accession to the United Nations. At today's session of the SDG Summit, we will explore different perspectives on building resilience. This focus on resilience resonates very strongly across the world. Actually, in my view, resilience should even be voted as the word of the year. In the eight years since the adoption of the 2030 Agenda, we have all witnessed many barriers to global progress due to conflicts, natural disasters, climate change, and the global pandemic. They all have cascading and devastating effects on socio-economic condition, particularly in developing countries. Against this backdrop, 
What have we learned? What should we do to build resilience? Let me share a few examples for my, from my own country. In times of crisis, investing in social resilience and social safety nets is particularly important to ensure that no one is left behind. In Poland, our priority is to provide support especially to persons in vulnerable situations as well as families, children, and older persons. Poland's solidarity and social resilience was best manifested by the remarkable assistance to Ukrainian refugees fleeing the Russian aggression. We have made very every effort to integrate refugees into our national systems of healthcare, education, and employment. Kiev will sue Poland, Hungary and Slovakia at the World Trade Organization over their refusal to lift a ban on imports of Ukrainian agricultural products. Restrictions on imports of Polish fruit and vegetables are also planned. The government imposed the ban after Brussels failed to extend the European Union embargo beyond the 15th of September. Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki said Poland may change its mind when a model of cooperation with our eastern Ukrainian neighbour is worked out. There are no grounds for this. If there were grounds, then the European Union should be sued before the World Trade Organization first, for the reason that these are the same rules that the European Union introduced until the 15th of September. Also, these are the same rules. We don't have different rules here. That's on the one hand. And on the other hand, I'll tell you a little bit of a controversial thing. But if this is said by Minister Kaczka, who attacks Poland very strongly in all forums, who said that he would submit Poland to the World Trade Organization because the Polish government is helping a Polish farmer, who more than once in his interviews compares Poland to Russia, then forgive me, but I will simply not comment on this, on these words that came from the mouth of such a man. That Ukraine wants to sue Poland, Slovakia and Hungary for extending the ban on Ukrainian grain imports is one thing. The other is the astonishing style of statements by Ukrainian Deputy Economy Minister Taras Kaczka, who behaves in a simply impertinent manner. In an interview with Politico, he lectures Poland on what he thinks EU member states can or cannot do. Kaczka even says that suing Poland is supposed to be an example to the world. Instead of lecturing Poland, the Ukrainian deputy minister should think about what kind of example for the world Ukraine is setting when it treats in such a way the country that saved Ukraine in its most dramatic moments. And above all, think about how Poles perceive the words and behaviour of the Ukrainian authorities. It can't be that in the interests of a few agro-holding companies, because most of the agro-holding companies that control the agricultural market are registered as these ten largest agro-holding companies in Ukraine. Only one is actually registered in Ukraine. All the others are registered in tax havens in Luxembourg, Cyprus or the Netherlands. Ladies and gentlemen, it cannot be that in the interest of the oligarch, a few holding companies and large foreign companies that are interested in importing duty-free goods into the European Union and earning billions of zwotis at the expense of Polish farmers, we will destabilize the situation in the European Union. There is absolutely no consent to this, and I trust that this announcement of the so-called tariff war by Mr. Taras Kaczka will be corrected, that there will be no lawsuit for international arbitration at the World Trade Organization. This is really fatal information for Ukraine itself, which in the same way strikes Polish feelings of full solidarity with the struggling Ukraine. Thousands of Israelis marched through Tel Aviv on Sunday to protest against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's contested changes to the country's judiciary overhaul. Wearing white to mark the Jewish New Year, which began over the weekend, the demonstrators waved the Israeli flag and chanted slogans against Netanyahu. I'm here along with um, thousands of other people who are all very worried about the democracy of our country and the way our government, the place our government is taking, the actions our government is taking, which are risking everything that's been built here in the past 70 years. My parents, my uh, uh, brothers, myself have been working very hard to build an amazing country and we feel that everything is being destroyed by destroying the courts, by dis uh, uh, introducing legislation that is threatening almost anything and everything, including my own profession, which is the academia. 
uh, the academic profession. Netanyahu is due to fly overnight to the United States, where he is scheduled to meet United States President Joe Biden, who has voiced concern over the judicial overhaul plan on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly later this week. Protest organizers said that there will be more demonstrations at the airport around Netanyahu's departure, as well as in California, where he was due to meet tech entrepreneur Elon Musk. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.